passions, all your wild ideas, that's what the world needs more of. Also, I feel like so many entrepreneurs have ADHD. Every single entrepreneur I talk to, they their mind goes a million miles a second. Yep. Learn something from everything. I think one of the, like I used to be really scared going into the realm of entrepreneurship as an artist and as a creative ADHD attention directed to her dimension person. Um, but what I realized is that because of my ADHD, I've just done so much shit. Like <laughs> I've done so much yep. shit. I've traveled. I've I've dabbled in a lot of things. I've dabbled in painting. I've dabbled in music production. I've uh, dabbled in dance. I've dabbled in acting. I've dabbled in so many things. But what I've realized is because of my attention directed to higher dimensions, what that's di- what that's done is it's allowed me to develop such a unique perspective and approach to business because I speak so many languages of industries. I understand a lot of different industries because I've just dabbled in a lot of things because of my ADHD. Like this used to be actually a really big insecurity of mine because I didn't have one focus. Yep, the jack of all trades. Yeah, uh, the jack of all trades, master of none. Do you know the full quote of that? Actually, I don't. The full quote of that is, a jack of all trades, master of none, but it's better to be a master of many than a master of one. Mm. Or uh, what was it? It's better to be, yeah, something... Yeah, a master of many than a master of one. Mm-hmm. I don't think it was a master. It was something like that. But basically, that that was the full quote. It's cut off at Jack of all trades, master of none. Mm. But yeah, essentially, yeah. Embrace your ADHD and embrace your your mind your mind's natural tendency to go in a lot of different paths. And then, like I'm the type of person too to gather a bunch of paint and throw it at the canvas. And then find find the picture within the chaos. That's just how I work personally. Um, other things from there is, let's see, another advice would be task management, time management. Mm-hmm. That's another important thing. Uh, the way that I've learned how to be efficient with my time, though, is to basically like mind hack myself, convince myself that something is fun. Yes. Yeah. That's something I learned from atomic habits. Yeah. Like when you're when you're shifting those habits you don't want anymore and, and, and implementing habits that you want to have in your life, make it fun. Yeah. Make it fun. Like if you're uh like let's say in entrepreneurship you have to learn about financial literacy. Don't think about okay, I have to learn about financial literacy and money and I, I don't care about money, blah, blah, blah. Like I actually had that same exact thought. But I made it fun by saying, Okay, if I learn about financial literacy, what is that what's the end result of that? creating a generation of thriving artists who aren't afraid of money, Mm -hmm. learning how to gain access to money so I can make more cool stuff. And then when I, when I made that intention more prominent, that purpose, when I attach that purpose to the task, it makes me do it and not even question it. Not, I wasn't lazy. I didn't uh, get distracted because I get laser focused. And I think anyone out there with ADHD attention directed higher dimensions going to keep saying that (laughs) anyone out there with ADHD uh, who has a problem focusing, you find that you can focus on things that you actually give a shit about. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's where your energy is just like really drawn to. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's incredible. You could have tunnel vision on things that we're actually passionate about. Mm-hmm. And I think that's good. Oh, know? yeah. Yeah. And so the the evolution of that is learning how to convince ourselves to be passionate about even the mundane things, mm-hmm. some of the main mundane things. Like... Like is folding, it mundane if you make it fun? Exactly. <laughs> like folding laundry, for example. Uh, my girlfriend, Lainey, like she she loves folding laundry. I, I suck at folding laundry. Like that's some that's a task that is very mundane and boring to me. Like I don't want to do it. Mm-hmm. But like one of the ways that I kind of mind hack myself for folding laundry is treating it as a meditation. Like, okay, as I'm folding laundry, I'm solving this problem in the business too. And when I finish folding the laundry, I set the intention that I'm going to understand the next step in the business. Mm-hmm. So I like I, I turn it into like a game. Yep. Kind of too. Yeah. So like learning how to time manage and also embrace your attention directed to higher dimensions. All your wild ideas, that's what the world needs more of. Mm-hmm. I truly believe that. Like creatives are the ones with all the the ideas. And I feel like also I feel like so many entrepreneurs have ADHD. Every single entrepreneur I talk to, they their mind goes a million miles a second. Yep. Yeah. And there are things that they are also just shitty at. <laughs> like, like, I'm so bad at so many things too. So, okay, 
the third one. So I'm going to give you three. One, embrace your ADHD. Two, time management. Three is, oh shit, I lost it. <laughs> Hold on, ADHD processing. <laughs> Rainbow wheel on, Ra on the map. Rainbow wheel. Um, this one is delegation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Delegation. I know as creatives and as, uh, yeah, people who, are ex who can be extremely passionate about what we create, we tend to be so attached to the thing that we're doing that we just want to control everything mm -hmm. and we don't want to trust other people to help us with different things. And I had a big problem with this too. Um, but one of my biggest evolutions in my journey is to realize that I can trust other people and creating with others is how you truly create great things. And one of the ways that I practice that experientially is with Roe. Like I, I'm very hard to trusting people and, and like, and working together with people. I'm scared like of working together. I'm like a lone wolf kind of dude. Same. That's me too. Yeah. It was. Yeah. <laughs> but when, when you find the right people, uh, like act on that and figure out how you can collaborate with other people who, who are similar minded, who are on the same path because acknowledging like, like you got to acknowledge your strengths and weaknesses like I, I wanted to be good at everything. I still have that mindset a little bit. Like I just want to do everything myself. I could be the best at everything. Yep. But I'm starting to realize, shit, I don't want to do that. <laughs> there's there's things that I just suck at and I'm like, wow, I need somebody else to help me with this and that would really help. And and that's what really, I think, shifted everything for me in, in the business. Because before I would do all the graphic design, I do all the video production, all that kind of stuff. But now uh, I delegate. Now I have teams that manage different aspects of the business that do the video editing or the social media management or the press and the PR for, for clients. And that frees me up time to do things like this. Mm -hmm. Which I'm really grateful for. Right. Because so, this has been an amazing conversation. <laughs> yeah. So now like I can make impact in so many different areas and, and focus on the things that I truly love too. Like that, not that I don't love those other things, but yeah, like I, I love having conversations. I love having these types of conversations and, Again, towards the purpose of creating a generation of thriving artists, I can't do that if I'm focused on writing an email. <laughs> you know, I can't do that if I'm focused on just creating um, like like twenty social media posts for one client. You know, so I trust somebody else to do that who has who has the skills that are maybe even be better than mine. Yeah, and 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 uh, give that client that that great service, and then I can be present. In these types of things too yeah so to, to recap embrace your adhd as a tool for you to accelerate your growth and expansion and find the in interconnectedness of your skills like everything that i've learned from dance and telling stories i know how to make people feel things because mm -hmm. i've been in entertainment i can make people cry i can make people laugh i can make people angry like <laughs> that, that can be kind of manipulative but like for, for the for um it could be used for good and evil right like like the jedi and the sith but because I understand those things, it accelerates my ability to help people in marketing mm -hmm. and to help people tell their stories in, in, uh, in beautiful ways. So embrace your ADHD. Two, time management. Find ways to make mundane things fun. Um, and attach purpose to your tasks every day. Intentionality uh, with, with your everyday life. And three is, what was three again? delegation <laughs> delegation <laughs> and see this is why uh like you trust other people see i forgot but then she was there to pick up the slack and, <laughs> and bring it back <laughs> Got right you. see so delegation embrace your adhd in the skills of adhd it's a skill it's a superpower manage your time make it fun and delegate those are my tips <laughs>when I started to shift how I use my words, words are powerful mm -hmm. and to call it instead of attention deficit disorder, like a dis a disorder that's like something's wrong with us and calling it attention directed to higher dimensions. It was, it became more empowering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's something that has really shifted my whole uh, experience of ADHD.